morning. It's the ninth Sunday after Pentecost, Sunday, August 2nd, 2020. I hope you're staying cool where you are on this August morning. We've joined together through the internet to celebrate together spiritual communion. It's a good thing that we're able to do in these difficult times. Also, I want to invite you after the service to join us at virtual coffee hour. Links and information to how to get to the coffee hour on your device went out through the announcements on Wednesday and this morning. Uh, join us if you're able at 10 o'clock this morning for, for a time of, of uh, relaxed conversation, checking in, seeing how we're doing. We're glad you're here. Let us celebrate. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The same night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. 
the sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. cry. Listen to my prayer which does not come from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes be fixed on justice. Weigh my heart, summon me by night. Melt me down, you will find no impurity in me. I give no offense with my mouth as others do. I have heeded the words of your lips. My footsteps hold fast to the ways of your law. In your paths my feet shall not stumble. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Show me your marvelous loving kindness. O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand from those who rise up against them. But at my vindication I shall see your face. When I awake I shall be satisfied beholding your likeness. A reading from the letter of Paul's letter to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred, according to the flesh. They're Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all God's blessed forever. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself, but when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had a compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. He replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said to them, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. They took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 
12 baskets and a full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. For the past three Sundays, we've been considering the parables and sayings of Jesus. What he taught his followers about God's rule in the world. This morning, things changed. We didn't hear any teaching of Jesus this morning. We watched Jesus in action. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. This morning, the gears have shifted. We've moved from teaching to ministry, from ideas about God's kingdom to the active embodiment of God's kingdom in and around Jesus. We're no longer reflecting on the ways by which God brings order and wholeness and flourishing into the world. Instead, we're pondering a direct and vivid example of Jesus doing the will and the kingdom of God. Jesus is modeling what it's like to live among others as an agent of the kingdom of God. Did you hear all that interaction going on in the gospel this morning? All those people motivating other people and other people motivating them back? There was drama in that story. Drama compelled or propelled by human interest, by human agency. People heard that Jesus was heading out in a boat, so they followed him on foot. That didn't mean they walked on the water. What they probably did was was skirted around the northern shore of the lake and kept an eye out there on that boat that had Jesus in it. Jesus moved, so they moved. And when he got to the other side of the lake, he went ashore and he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them. And then he cured their sick. Seeing those people and all their needs, Jesus was moved with compassion. That's how we say it. He moved among the people, probably speaking words of encouragement, maybe laying a hand on this or that one, curing their sicknesses. Matthew presents to us Jesus in action. Jesus, Messiah, the Son of God, deeply involved in human life. He was not aloof. He was not disconnected. He was down in the bustle of engagement, causing people to respond in certain ways and responding himself to the people in certain ways. It's important for us to notice how he was embodying the rule of God. He didn't impose it. He, he didn't impose the kingdom from on high. Jesus did not bring wholeness and flourishing to life from outside of life. He was down inside life, down in the action, bringing God's rule in the world from within the world, right? Changing chains of events. Jesus wanted some alone time, so he headed out. People saw him heading out. And they desired his ministrations, so they crowded over to see him. Then he saw them, he had compassion on them, and healed them. And the next thing we hear, as the events of that day continued to spool out among the nexus of human interactions, more than 5,000 people were fed. The risen Christ is actively involved down in the world, 
in a lot of ways, in ways that we can see and notice and recognize, in other ways that we don't see, in ways that make sense to us sometimes, but other times don't make sense. The risen Christ is most certainly active in the give and take of the life of the world through the church, through you, through me, through us together. We've been praying it every Sunday for the past several Sundays that we might be Christ's hands and heart in the world. That we might move others and that others might move us that together as the body of Christ, we might work under Christ and through Christ to bring God's order and wholeness and nourishment, God's kingdom, more fully into the world. But that's not the whole story. There's at least one more lesson that I heard reading today's gospel, and it's this. Christ is present and active within the active give and take of human life, but he's not bound within that human interaction. Jesus cured and fed people. He, he was pushed to do so through interaction. He responded with compassion, but he didn't feed and cure them wholly from within that matrix of interactions. Jesus was able to reach beyond it to bring the kingdom. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a, desert, a deserted place and it's late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. The disciples urged Jesus to make the next move, right? Another advance to propel the unfolding series of that evening's events. Actually, they were, they were making a triangulating move, right? The disciples wanted Jesus to move those people on home. Send them away. Push back, Jesus. Engage these people in this way to this purpose. Send them off to fend for themselves. As, you, as usual, Jesus didn't respond to that request of the disciples. And he didn't respond in the way that the disciples expected him to. They urged one course of action, and Jesus took another. He began with this response. They need not go away. Jesus did not think that sending them away was the right next move. He didn't think sending them away to fend for themselves was a divine counter move within the larger interaction. They need not go away, he said. And then Jesus made another move, a counter move, by turning it on the disciples. He said, you give them something to eat. I think that's a great moment in this story. It might be the crucial moment, and it's, and it's easy to miss. I think we need to envision a dramatic pause at that moment, a, a charged silence, perhaps the most crucial moment of that whole day that we hear about. The, disciple, the, the disciples surely didn't see it coming. I bet they were stunned but probably one of them eventually replied, we don't have anything but, you know, these, these loaves and these fishes. I can picture Jesus pausing another moment and then saying, okay, bring them to me. And we heard what happened next. He ordered, he ordered everybody to sit on the grass. He took the loaves and fishes. He blessed God for them. He broke them. He gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them out to the crowd. And you heard how it ends. All ate and were filled. And the disciples took up the leftovers, and there were 12 baskets full of them. Matthew's testimony regarding the feeding of the multitude is consistent with the other gospel accounts. It was a wonder. It was a marvel. It was a miracle. It was Jesus wholly embodied within the interconnected give and take of human life, 
but somehow reaching beyond that give and take, beyond business as usual, to bring in flourishing that was wonderful. It was miraculous. That's what the kingdom of God looks like. It's what it looked like then, and I think it's what it looks like now, or at least it ought to. The risen Christ is alive, active, present, now working among us and through us in the power of the Holy Spirit. In that spirit power through the church, Christ is still pushing back still engaging in the exchanges of human concourse. Do what? Bring about the order and the flourishing and the wholeness. All of that that makes up the kingdom of God to restore this good but fallen creation. Let's keep at it. Let's stay the course. Let's do our part in that bringing in of the kingdom. Amen. Together, let's affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all of those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Especially Ed today who requests prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that, you will, for, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with you all your saints in your eternal kingdom. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives, we have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now using the words of Psalm 63, we enter into spiritual communion. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore, I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content, as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. In union, O Lord, with the faithful of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united to you. And since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all the love of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you and may you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. 
for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all the ages. Amen. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. In the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, God. be to God. Thank you.